Unfortunately, a lot of people make simplistic uh, judgment calls on whether you should be in one political party or another, whether you should criticize the president or you shouldn't criticize the president. Those kind of blanket generalizations drive me crazy. Like, it, I want to scream every time. It depends. What's he doing? So, are you criticizing him for something that makes sense or for something that doesn't make sense? And today in the news, we happen to have two really great examples. Uh, by the way, both from so-called progressives, one's an actual progressive, um, who criticized President Obama for senseless things, and then who, and then the other person, Elizabeth Warren, criticized him for things that are very sensible. So let's try to make that distinction for people who are having trouble with that distinction. So Howard Feynman has been around a long time. He's considered a progressive. Worked at Huffington Post, Newsweek. He's at MSNBC now. Uh, you know, of course there are things I agree with him on, and then there are things that drive me crazy, including his latest post. He writes uh, that uh, Obama is uh, now in a lot of trouble. Now I say that for completely different reasons, right? But he's going to give you exactly what conventional wisdom is, which he's done many times in his career. He says, the rollout of his sweeping new health law was a mess, enforcement of border security has been spotty, and the initial response to the Ebola outbreak was slow and low key. None of that is true. Look, look, the first part of it is true, but at this point entirely irrelevant. So the rollout of the website of healthcare was flawed. So what? It's fixed now. Everybody who was going to get insurance at that time now has the insurance. Why are you still talking about that? Like, and it has nothing to do with the content of the Affordable Care Act. So people who emphasize that are like beltway guys, mainstream guys, oh yeah, that's an acceptable criticism of the president. I mean, we don't want to get into policy. Oh, his website didn't work for a while. We're going to still talk about it all this time later. All right. Enforcement of the border security has been spotty. That's not true. If border security under Obama has been more ramped up, significantly so, than under the Bush administration. He's sent more people back, he's deported more people than Bush did, he's broken records on both counts. Your only reason that you would say it's spotty is because all the Republicans in Washington cry about it. So conventional wisdom says, well, Republicans are always 50% right, so that's it, we're going to call it spotty, even though it has broken records for deportations, etc. So, no, that, that's not true at all. And then the Ebola outbreak was slow and low key. His reaction. What did you want him to do? Nuke Ebola? Do a first strike against Ebola? Look, I think he's been slow and low key in, in other respects, but against the Ebola, what was he supposed to do? Go and find a cure by himself? What, what was he supposed to tackle the guy coming out of the airport in Dallas? Be like, I found him! I found him before anybody else said Ebola. At some point, somebody was going to get into the country with Ebola. And so far, by the way, that guy was exposed to hundreds of people, and only the one nurse now has Ebola. But what does that have to do with Obama? I mean, even if you wanted to give him credit, I wouldn't let you give him credit for that. It, it has no connection to him. These people drive me crazy. Okay, then he says, words matter. Trained as a lawyer, Obama should be aware of the uses of ambiguity, uh, but he makes sweeping declarations that damage his credibility. He assured all Americans that his health care plan would allow them to keep their doctor. It wasn't quite true. Now we're going back to this bullshit, okay? So, did Obama say you can keep your doctor? And did it turn out because of the new insurance, sometimes you couldn't keep your new doctor? Yes. Uh, is that something that the mainstream guys love to talk about? Because Obama admitted it. Obama said, oh, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. You in, in the 50 50 world of Washington, that is a terrible mistake. If you, the Republicans never admit error, as soon as you admit an error, it allows the Howard Feynman's of the world forever to beat you down and say, he said it, he said it, so I'm allowed to say it. That was a mistake. Look, the reason you quote unquote, can't keep your doctor in certain circumstances is because your insurance is better. That's the part they never tell you about. Look, I had my issues with Obamacare, and so far it's been surprisingly good, better than I expected, okay? But it, if you had crappy insurance that covered almost nothing, that is not allowed under the new law because that insurance is so bad. It's, it's, it wasn't serving you in the first place. What they say is now you're forced into getting better insurance at either the same rate or at a lower rate oftentimes. Now in rare instances, because your insurance is so much better, it'll be nominally higher, but overall healthcare prices have not gone up as expected at all. But they turned that around. Oh, I, I couldn't keep my I couldn't keep my crappy insurance. Howard Feynman, theoretically a progressive, why is he repeating all this nonsense? All right, one last one. He said on the issue of foreign policy. He declared that if the Syrian president Bashar Assad crossed the red line and used the chemical weapons, the U.S. would respond severely. 
He did and we didn't. Obama said that Ebola was highly unlikely to come to America. Two weeks later, a victim died in Dallas. Here we go again with the Ebola nonsense. Okay, I already covered that. Now, in a serious situation. Now, what Feynman doesn't tell you, what Washington pundits almost never tell you, is that the reason we didn't go and invade Assad at that time is because he said, okay, I'll give up all my chemical weapons. And he did. You see, that's not a failure. That's actually one of Obama's best successes. He said, you know, if you use chemical weapons as a red line, I'm coming for you. And you did use them, and I'm coming for you. And then Assad said, mercy, okay, here's all my chemical weapons. And he gave them up. How is that a bad thing? So Obama was smart enough that he didn't need to declare a war in that instance. We're in war anyway. That's a legitimate criticism of President Obama. But at that time, he avoided war and got exactly what he wanted. Oh, yeah, Obama, I think, like... He, there was a red line cross, and you didn't uh, do preemptive strikes and, uh, and put gr ground troops into Syria. And if you had, you'd have, you know, we would have gotten aside and would have put the rebel Sunnis in charge. Who are the rebel Sunnis again? Oh, right, ISIS. How is this in any way a valid criticism of Obama? Look, there are other uh, rebels in Syria, but the strongest, unfortunately, are ISIS. Now, turn to Elizabeth Warren for a legitimate criticism of President Obama. She points out recently again, she said, they protect Wall Street. Now these are tough words from a Democratic senator when we have a Democratic president in the White House. She said, they protect Wall Street, not families who are losing their homes, not people who lost their jobs, not young people who were struggling to get an education. And it happened over and over and over. So I see both of those things and they both matter, okay? So on this, Finally, thank God, substantive criticism. It's true. We handed through the Fed trillions of dollars to the banks, and then through TARP, of course, $700 billion, and there was no accountability. Nobody, no, none of the top executives went to jail. Uh, Obama said he doesn't look backwards, he only looks forwards. He let them off the hook entirely. They got all this taxpayer money, and normally, if you got somebody bailing you out like that, well then we would own those things. We would own AIG, we might own the banks because we saved them. Any other private investor that did that would own them and then would reap the profits afterwards. Did we reap the profits as taxpayers? No, okay? No, they got all the profits, we covered their losses in the beginning until they stabilized again. At a best case scenario, we sometimes got paid back the money. Wow, but that's not how capitalism works, right? But nonetheless, we had to take the hit, we had to take the liability, and the bankers walked away with their millions and millions of dollars. See, she's right about that. And did the homeowners get the similar treatment? No way. The program that Obama said was gonna help homeowners, they used a fraction of that money to help a fraction of the people, because to them, the homeowners are not that important. Why? The real criticism of President Obama is that he is the establishment. That he followed Bush's policies, whether it was a foreign policy. I mean, look at this. Yes, he didn't go into Syria in the first place, which I give him a lot of credit for, and he accomplished the objective. But we're in Syria anyway, because later, Washington pushed him and pushed him. And pushed him. He's like, all right, fine. So, yeah, ISIS, yeah, Khorasan, whatever that thing is. All right, let's go into Iraq and Syria, and here we are back at war. And on domestic issues, he followed Bush's foreign policy. He did almost nothing about income inequality, and the banks are just as rich as they were. His tax cuts for the rich were tiny, 94% of the money that was under the Bush tax cuts, the rich got to keep under Obama. And in fact, it was made permanent, which Bush couldn't even do. And finally, uh, Warren also says, if Barack Obama had not been President of the United States, we would not have a Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. At the same time, he picked his economic team, and when the going got tough, his economic team picked Wall Street. So now, those things are also true. Give him credit for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, by the way, which was the idea of Elizabeth Warren. And when uh, she was supposed to be the head of it, Obama blocked her and said, no, no, it's not realistic. The Republicans would object, object to you. Yeah, they would object to anyone protecting consumers. So yet another instance of President Obama doing at best a half measure and uh, so worried about Republican reaction and Washington establishment reaction that he didn't actually do what he needed to do. And then in terms of actually fixing the underlying problem of the banks, in terms of credit default swaps and leverage, et cetera. So will there be another crash? Yes. As far as the timing of it, no one knows when the timing will be, but you have the same exact system where the bankers are incentivized to take gigantic risks because they keep the profits and they shift the losses onto either shareholders 
or us, the taxpayers. So please, there is no pro-Obama, there is no anti-Obama. There's a question of which issue, which policy point, and what is your argument on that? So some of these criticisms of President Obama, whether they come from the left or the right, are preposterous. And others are perfectly valid. In order to be able to tell the difference, you've got to use your brain. Sorry, there are no easy answers.